Hello everyone. Um, if you've not met me, my name is Mark Llewellyn and I'm Professor of Health and Care Policy at the University of South Wales. And we've been working for the last couple of months with colleagues across Cardiff and Vale who are engaged in social prescribing to put in place a few useful tools that will help services to evaluate where they are. And what I'm going to talk to you today about is something called the development matrix that we've co-designed with those partners. I'll explain all of that, hopefully in a relatively short space of time, um, so that you're clear about what we've done. So the purpose of this was to recognise, I think, the importance of social prescribing and the growth of social prescribing as a national policy direction. So Welsh Government have established a framework around social prescribing. There are standards now attached to that. And social prescribing perhaps has a, a place in, in our policy and practice that it, it's never previously had. So recognising that and recognising the importance of it as a means of preventing people from um, needing to uh, or getting to points of crisis in their lives colleagues across Cardiff and Vale approached us at the university to think about how we could put in place this framework so that's the purpose of it to allow you to reflect on where you are and where you might need to go next so what is you may be asking a development matrix and where did the idea come from well very very simply all it is is a mechanism whereby you can assess your progress against a series of statements, and I'll show you those in a few moments, and recognise, I suppose, having got to that place, that there is some development, if you like, for you to engage in, in order to move across the, the matrix. So it describes qualitatively a range of the factors that go into good social prescribing services. It's built on some evidence, so um, we undertook a review of the literature, which has been written up and is available. And we also undertook a consensus building exercise online with colleagues across services to understand what data points were really important, what data mattered in assessing where people had got to. The best way to think about it, I, I feel, is, is as a roadmap. So it will describe to you where you might need to go from and go to against a series of these different domains and indicators, which I'll show you very, very shortly, uh, in order to um, chart where your service is and where your service now needs to go. So without any further ado, how does it work? Well, it's made up of a series of domains and indicators, which are just basically jargony words for um, the kind of practical description of a good service. So this is what the document looks like. You can download it from um, the Cardiff and Vale RPB website, and there'll be links available as part of this for you to be able to do that. There's a short description of the purpose of the matrix, which echoes what I've said a moment ago at the beginning, and then something on how to use the matrix. So this is what I will talk about now, and I'll, I'll pull up one of the domain so that you can see um, see it as a kind of worked example. So there are six domains within the matrix. The first one is about relationships. So this is the domain heading up here. And then we've got a series of different indicators, 1.1, 1.2, etc., which break down that relationships domain. So these are the component parts, if you like, of what makes good relationships when it comes to social prescribing. And then we've got five statements, one, two, three, four, five. And these are the qualitative descriptions that I'm highlighting there. I'll just make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. So Taking this one example, uh, 1.1, what we're trying to get at here is where do you assess your service against this indicator? So talking about relationships with senior leaders. Now, that might vary depending on what type of service with, within what type of organisation you're talking about. But in your view, defining senior leaders as something that matters to you. Are you at statement one where your senior leaders are not aware or understand what it is that you're doing in your service? You get to statement two, where there is a growth of awareness. Are you at statement three, where they're beginning, there is a beginning of a communication relationship between yourselves and them? Through statement four, where that communication is regular and beginning to be quite meaningful? Or are you at statement five, which, is, if you like, is the most mature, the most well-developed statement against this one ind individual indicator, where you've got really good uh, flows of communication between you and them, they're champions, they advocate for your service and, and they can talk about it in, in really positive terms. So that's how that one indicator uh, is laid out. So what it would be, um, 
is for you as an individual or you as part of a team or you as the whole service to sit down and say, okay, where do we think we are? There's no hard and fast rule about the right way to do it, but it makes sense if this is a conversation, I think, that you have with others so that you can bounce uh, ideas off one another. Um, you come to a view as to where you think you are. And there are two options that we offer you, if you like, because it won't be absolutely definitive. So we suggest that you colour these in because um, why not? Colouring in things is fun. In either a darker shade, if you think, yes, we've definitely got to that point. We're definitely at that stage. Or a lighter shade if you think, well, we're sort of part of the way along the journey towards that, but we're not quite there. So let's go back to this 1.1 as our example. If you think, OK, well, we're definitely at a point in time where we've gone through those three stages and it doesn't really matter what colour you choose. Let's go for green because it's, you know, a dynamic progress uh, colour associated with progress. OK, we've got that far across. That's great. We've definitely done those ones. This statement for, however, we're not quite there. We're, we've begun the journey, if you like, of getting to a place where we've got that regularity. So we're part of the way there. That's our assessment as to where we are right now. Great. And then you move on through all of the other indicators uh, in the matrix. So first domain, as I mentioned, is about relationships with these different component indicators. The second domain is about community insights and involvement. So the relationship that you have as a service with the people that you're there to support. Again, broken down into a series of different indicators and you make an assessment against each one as you go across. I should have said, if you don't think any one indicator is relevant to you, so just taking this one as an example, there's a column over here where you can mark that up as not applicable to us for whatever reason. The third domain is about the staff that you have and volunteers that you have within the um, within the service so we don't just mean paid staff when we say staff we mean staff and, and volunteers within the service the fourth domain perhaps the most important because this is what it's all about is the person-centered approach that you take um, and again, there are a series of different indicators within that that you make assessments against. Uh, the fifth domain is about service development. So where are you in terms of being able to look at the performance that you've got, how crisp and um, well defined are the lines of sight that you have about what you're doing and where you're having impact? And the sixth domain is about information governance. The final thing I'll just say uh, before I stop sharing my screen is that these data items, so these link back to one of the pieces of work that I mentioned that we, we undertook. So the online consensus building exercise looked at a range of methods. So those are the kinds of things that you might want to reflect on when it comes to making your, your self-assessment. So let me just stop sharing my screen. OK, so that's the way the matrix works. The final question then perhaps that it's worth reflecting on is what happens after you've done it? And this is really dependent on you. So there's no compulsion at all. This is not about anyone saying you've got to submit your answers. You've got to send them in centrally. That's not the purpose of this at all. This is intended to be a self-assessment exercise which allows you to reflect honestly on where you are. Now, that honesty is absolutely crucial. There's no point in doing this as an exercise if every single time you think, oh, we're bound to be at statement five, you know, we've won the race, we've got to the far side of the diagram. That That's not what this is designed for. This is there to allow you to have that honest conversation with each other. And if there's a difference of opinion in the group, that's great, because that allows you to understand, well, why don't you think we're at statement three? Why do you think we're at statement two or statement one? Because that's a rich source of learning uh, for service development, because if part of the team thinks one thing and part of the team thinks something else, there's always a reason behind that that you can explore. And to use that then as a means of, of developing what it is that you offer. So those, those decisions about which statement you're at really only work if you're going to be brutally honest with yourselves about about your stage of, of development. So that's really, really important because of that. It stays with you. So it stays as um, it stays as a, a thing that sits within your service. 
There is an opportunity in a safe space for you to begin to engage with others, though. So if you're interested in either sharing your good practice because you think actually in those domains, we're doing fantastically well. We've got really good relationships with our community. We've got that reciprocity. We've, you know, we've done a fantastic job and we want to share that with others or because you want to be involved in a community of, of and a network of people who are also trying to do social prescribing and you might want to learn from them because they perhaps have been doing it for a bit longer than you have or they're working in a slightly different context. There is a network that you can join and there is an opportunity should you want to share some of the lessons but in a very anonymized way from your development matrix exercise with others. What we would say, I think, is that this is a longitudinal tool. So it works well if you revisit it at several points in time, whether that's six monthly or 12 monthly will, again, depend on your circumstances and what will best suit you. But tracking that change over time, coming back to this in six months or 12 months and saying, OK, well, where were we when we made that assessment in the summer? Things have now moved on. Where are we now? Where perhaps have we seen areas um, individual indicators where we are further ahead than we were, which ones have stayed the same, and actually sometimes which ones have we gone back on because because the context is different because we're working in a in a different way because what was the local situation is now no longer that local situation for us. So there's absolutely no problem at all whatsoever if this moves backwards because that's just a reflection of the way things are uh, and obviously if it moves forward more positively towards those statement five statements that's fantastic hopefully that's a useful explanation i think the final thing i'd say the key thing is getting uh, getting used to it is is downloading it and having a go read the statements have a look at the detail there they do come from insights from people who've been delivering services it's not a an academic exercise if you like we sat down with a, about four or five different services to help us come up with these descriptions so they're they're born out of the experience of people who've been working in cardiff and vale trying to develop services like this so they should have a resonance and a relevance for you and we hope that they do so download a copy have a read if you can find some time then as a team to to sit with it reflect on it and have a discussion about it hopefully it'll be a useful tool hopefully it'll sharpen up what it is that you do and identify some of those areas for your development so i, I recommend it to you hopefully you'll find it useful and interesting um, and there'll be a series of links around the film uh, on the website where you'll be able to to download and find out more thanks <laughs>